Now, in terms of applications, now let's step back one more step. And let's say that, well, I don't even have a DC. Let's say that I plug in, let's say that I want to make something like this adapter, right? I plug in the adapter to the outlet. I know that my outlet is giving me a sinusoidal voltage, right? So I'm talking about something like this. And I know that the frequency of this voltage is 60 Hertz because that's the power line frequency. The voltage across the peak to peak voltage or peak of this voltage could be depending on where you're living in the in the volt. If you're in North America, you're talking about 110 volts or 120 volts. And, and if you're in the Europe or well, some other places in the world, you're talking about 20, uh, 220 or two, up to 240 volts. OK, but we know that we have a sinusoidal. But at the same time, I know that the electronic device that I bought could be a cell phone, could be I don't know, a camera or whatever that I want to charge it, uh, or even my laptop. It tells me that I want this exact DC voltage for the charging, right? So if it's a basically, uh, it's a small device like this one, you can see that it, it is telling me that I want five volts with this much of amperes, right? For a laptop, I don't I don't remember like basically I'm not sure if it's the same for all laptops, but for but for most of them they want somewhere around 20 volts, right? 19.5 or something like that. At the end of the day, you want to take a sinusoidal and you want to create a DC voltage of arbitrary value, right? So this is voltage, this is time. Let's say this is your sinusoidal. So this is time and this is voltage. So you want to go from AC to DC. And the question is that how can we use diodes to actually make that happen? Okay, so first let's take a look at this circuit. Uh, we know how to analyze this from uh, what we have learned in the past week. We know that, let's say that if I want to draw the V in, V out characteristics of this device or the circuit, uh, let's say this is V in, this is V out. And I know that if V in is at negative infinity, um, the anode is negative infinity, the cathode here, any voltage that is higher than negative infinity, so the diode is off. Therefore, the V out, there's not going to be any current. So when there's no current across the resistor, the voltage across the resistor is zero. So V out is going to be just zero, right? And this is this continues. So since the V out is zero, this continues until V in becomes um, and let's say for the sake of simplicity of my explanation, let's say that assume VD on is equal to 0 0.7. This doesn't actually reduce anything from the general generality of our solution. It's just that it's hard to say VD on and VD all the time. I'm just going to use 0.7 so that we have a uh, clear understanding, like a numerical example of what I'm talking about, right? So if V out is zero when the diode is off, we're, we're going to have the diode off until V in becomes 0.7, right? Or when it increases up beyond 0.7, right? So we're going to have basically V out at zero until V in becomes 0.7. Oops. Okay, now what will happen after that? After that, uh, basically V in is increasing. So it becomes 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 1 volt, 2 volts, 3 volts. It's just basically it goes up. But since my diode is on, it, it is replaced with this voltage source of 0.7. So when the input becomes 2 volts, the output becomes 1.3. When the input becomes 10 volts, the output becomes 9.3, right? It's always V out. So when uh, D1 is on, I can say that V out is equal to V in minus 0.7. So I can actually draw the line. I know that this is a line with a slope of 1 and the y-intercept of negative 0.7, so somewhere around here. So this is going to be the line. Okay, so this part is related to the previous week. Uh, so it would be, this was a nice kind of a reminder about like what we did last week, but uh, there's nothing new up to here, right? We know how to do this even from uh, the stuff that we learned from last week, right? So why did I do this analysis? 
Now imagine that my V in now is a sinusoidal voltage, it's not a DC voltage. So my V in is actually changing, going up and down, uh, basically with time. So let's say that this is my V in. And let's see that my, how does my V out look like? Well, how does it look like? We know that it's going to look like this based on this figure, but let's an analyze the circuit and see why it looks like that, or the analyze this V in V out relationship and to figure out why it looks like that. Well, the easier, the easier part is when the diode is off, right? So when the diode is off, meaning that from here, I can see that whenever my V in is negative, meaning that anything to the left of the Y axis, my V out is zero. Okay. So that's easy. So whenever my V in is negative, meaning that this half cycle and this half cycle, I can easily make V out equal to zero. Great. So half of the problem is solved. The other thing that I can actually observe from this chart is that whenever my V in is smaller than 0.7, so for this range, my V out is still zero. So even for the positive half cycle, I can see that here, 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 and here. Because V in hasn't reached, so this is the 0.7. Until V in reaches this dashed line, V out stays at zero. Okay, I hope this is clear. So this is basically the point that V in reaches the dashed line, the point seven, and then after that V out starts to increase. Now, what will happen to the V out after that? Well, I know that V out is V in minus 0 0.7. So my V out is gonna follow my V in uh, behavior like whatever change I have in the V in, I'm going to have in the V out, but with a shift of a 0.7. That's why you can see that it has this kind of a sinusoidal behavior, at least for the positive half cycle, but it doesn't come up all the way to the peak of my V in simply because it's basically a shifted down version of V in. So uh, basically, if let's say V in goes up to 5 volts, I can say that my V out is going only up to 4.3 volts. Right, it just starts later, right? Because it starts going up later. Uh, you can imagine that it, it doesn't go up as far. Okay, so whenever the uh, the diode is on, it's a voltage source, and whenever the diode is off, it's an open switch. This is from our constant voltage model, but this is why for a sinusoidal V in, I'm gonna get. Let's call this a rectified sinusoidal for the V out. Why is it rectified? Because I'm only allowing uh, the positive half cycle. I'm not allowing the negative half cycle. So I'm somehow rectifying, meaning that I'm only allowing positive stuff to pass. Uh, and I'm actually making, instead of having a sinusoidal with both polarities, I only have a sinusoidal or a half sinusoidal with a positive polarity. So I'm, in a sense, I'm rectifying it to one direction. Uh, I'm rectifying my waveform um, and that's why we call this circuit a half wave rectifier. Okay, so it rectifies half of the wave. It just basically doesn't do anything, doesn't do much to the other half. Okay, by the way, you might think that, well, we lost a lot here, like basically almost half of my signal is lost, and uh, basically it's not really rectified, it also attenuates my signal. In reality, think about it that, like if you're talking really about 120 volts. Um, sinus like a sinusoidal with a peak of 120 volts you can think of it that well 0.7 volts is not gonna cause this much of change between the v in and v out like you probably have if this is your v in your v out is going to be very close to that because 0.7 in 120 volts is almost nothing right so the attenuation and by the way we can actually tweak this 0.7 a little bit. There are ways to actually make diodes have very small uh, VD on, but that's outside of the scope of this course. For now, let's just talk about this 0.7. This 0.7 is nothing compared to like 120 volts. So we don't care too much about that. So you can think of it that if you actually feed a sinusoidal to a half, rec half wave rectifier, this is an exaggerate, exaggerated kind of a picture. In reality, you're gonna get half sinusoidal uh, for basically the positive cycle, positive half cycles, and then zero for the negative half cycles. Now, how about this uh, second 
circuit that we have down here well again i guess all of you can do this now and i encourage you to do that uh, if you actually analyze the circuit you will see that it uh, it works the opposite of the circuit on the top so for positive v ins we have zero up to negative 0 0.7 we still have zero and then after that i have this linear relationship so that's why when i provide the sinusoidal v in i'm gonna get a half wave rectifier but this time i'm rectifying only the negative parts of my input waveform okay so just for the fun of it and for the practice please try to actually analyze this circuit make sure that you get this kind of a plot and make sure you understand fully why the v out looks like this waveform okay